worship or surround us with your presence. God, even as we don't get it out this morning, Papa God, for worship you, for celebrate you. I pray, our Father, our God, in every, each and every one of us will not take it on the same way we came this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We commit this service into your hands. We pray, our Father, our God, in that we will touch every life tonight, this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every life will be healed. Every life will be delivered this morning by the word of God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We decree and declare this place the danger zone for the enemy. We come against every spirit of destruction against this service. We put on our subjection in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We bless you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the adoration. As we declare this service open in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. If you have your bulletin, please turn. Our confession, please. This is my year. This is my year of overflowing blessing for kingdom harvest. I give God praise because he has great plans for my life this year. Plans to prosper me and not to hurt me. The Holy Spirit is my teacher, clothe me with glory and glory to excel in my specialized field. I believe and confess that I am the head and not the tail. Every human rejection will result into godly promotion because there is a res res restoration for glory. Prosperity is coming into my, into my life because the prophet has spoken and I believe. I stand against negative images that stand are contrary to the ways of abundance. The whole of witchcraft is broken. The windows of heaven are open unto me to walk in overflowing blessing for kingdom harvest. We are blessed and highly favor. We are blessed and highly favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody turn to your tap and tell and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Put another person tell and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you are great. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you are great you are highly lifted up you are worthy to be praised father son and holy ghost you are great father son and holy ghost father son and holy ghost you are Oh 
wave to Jesus this morning. Wave to Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, just open your heart to the Lord. Just begin for talk to God. Open your heart this morning. We worship you, Jesus. Talk to God, be personal this morning. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. In our midst, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Adabo shila branta nele basa dale kasa dala branta kosha zibre le kasi andala basa. We bless you, Jesus. Let your glory fall this morning, O oh God. Let sickness be healed this morning, O oh God. O oh Lord, let depression be healed this morning, O oh Father. As we worship, we worship you. Just open your hearts to the Holy Spirit. I will lift up my hands to the hills. Come and swarm at my head. My help cometh from the Lord. Come on this morning. The Lord which made heaven and earth. Come on, come on, come on. He said he would not stop. this morning. Sickness is leaving you this morning. Everything we have, we give to you, Jesus. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Withholding nothing. Oh, Jesus. Withholding nothing. Come on, everybody, this morning. Say with holding. With holding nothing. 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 Holding nothing. Holding nothing. My family, I keep 
What he said to do. He's gonna hold up every promise. Do you believe that this morning? Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's a He's going to 
take you through. Through every pain, through every sickness. He is able. God is able. You have to believe this this morning that he is able. Exceedingly abundantly. He is able. congregation this morning. Let it be personal. You have to feel one more time here. As you are singing, the sickness is going away. Depression is leaving you right now. Addiction is leaving you right now. Yeshua. Oh, oh, oh. We thank you, Jesus. Shame and guilt is leaving you right now. Reproach and harassment is leaving you. One more time here. Yeshua. As you are singing the song, you are being from every bondage, from every chain. Ah. Be personal this morning between you and the Holy Spirit, between you and Jesus. He is the Father, He knows all things. Ah. I just want to hear everybody. Yes, you.
Smile to them, smile to them. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading this morning is coming from the second epistle of Peter, chapter 1, reading from verse 1 to 14. Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained the like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him 
that had called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by thee, these ye may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar, afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these, these things, you shall never fail. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you once know them and are established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must, be pu I must put off this my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. This is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is offering time. But let me tell you a short story. Some years back, long years back, I don't know if who knows the, the great man of God, R. W. Shambach. He was ministering and while ministering, he called for an offering. And he saw a young boy, about 10 or 12 years, coming from the back. And he was crying. He came to the altar. So the man of God was moved. They called this young boy. He said, why are you crying? He said, I said, I told my parents I want a cow. He said, my parents said I should save my lunch to buy the cow. He said, so I have been saving my lunch. He said, but while I was seated at the back, God told me to come and drop the $10 that I have saved. So he was crying, and he dropped the $10. And while the boy was going, a big man was coming, fat man. He also was crying, and the man of God called him, why are you crying? He said, God told me to give this boy the fattest cow. The boy did not say it on the mic. He said, God told me to give this boy the fattest cow. And long story short, the man of God said, the, 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 the big man told him later, I say, the next day, this boy went to his farm with a truck. And he picked the fat cow from his farm. And he did not even say thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, God is about to bless that seed that you're about to drop this morning. And you, 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 don't, you, are, you are not under any obligation to say thanks to any man. Because it is God who would do it. Rise to your feet this morning. I don't know what you're trusting him for, but rise to your feet this morning and come drop what he has told you to drop. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Hallelujah for the Lord our God, the Almighty. Hallelujah.
Somebody say, it rains. It rains. Let us pray. That you who have the hearts of kings in your hand, turn it in their favor in the name of Jesus. Whatever they need this week, supply it. May men rush to bring it to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God will reign in your business. God will reign over that need that you are believing him for. God will reign over your circumstance. Just surrender everything to him and know that he is Lord. Hallelujah. Celebrate him this morning. Celebrate God this morning. Because he reign. Hallelujah. Well, celebrate your friend this morning. Turn to your next Neighbor, beside you, behind you, in front of you, celebrate God that you can see that person this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, let's see our guests. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, can you please rise to your feet? Today is your very first time here in Flaming Bible Church. Celebrate them this morning. Celebrate them this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to stand. Continue to stand. You are our precious guest this morning. And we bless God for your lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue to stand on behalf of his grace, the bishop, myself, Reverend Olamide Macaulay, the entire clergy and the entire church. We say welcome to this, our edifice. And we pray that you will have a wonderful encounter with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, there's a slipper form going around, and we want you to fill those forms. And then after the service, we'll call up for you, and you will surrender those forms to Reverend Aruni and the other ministers. We love you, love you so much, and we have a wonderful song for you this morning. And we pray that you will be here with us as we sing you the song. And if you want to feel free to dance, you can dance. Hallelujah. God bless you. Choir, ministers, and instrumental come on Woo. come on now continue to stand please yeah mm -hmm. oh we welcome you welcome you in this house this house of the lord the flaming family the flaming family are are saying to you you are welcome. warmly welcome this morning we welcome you we welcome you Sounds of the Lord, the baby family say, You are warm, 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 you are you of the Lord, the lady family say, you are warmly, warmly welcome. We say, may you be blessed, you be blessed, and be highly favored, yeah. Highly favored, as you join us, as you join us, just to worship. Oh, may you be blessed, I like you that. Be blessed, Come on now, yeah. Highly favored, you highly favored. Join us just to worship. And we want to say we love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you. We love you with the love of yeah, the Lord. Yeah, we love you. We love you so please, please come, please come, please come again. again. We love you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Hey, yeah, we love you. We love you with the love. We love you, love you, love you, love you. We love you with the love. So please, please one more time, the church say we love you. Come again with your friends, with your families, with your loved ones. Thank you very much and the Lord richly bless you. Thank you, church. Thank you, choir. Put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
clap for the Lord Jesus, His Most Excellency. In Jesus' name, kindly listen to the following notices and announcements. For today, Sunday, 10th March 2024, we welcome all first timers, and you are always welcome to this edifice. Our Sunday services always commence at 8 a.m. Every Wednesday also is time for healing, miracle, and deliverance. Wednesday, 5 p.m., this place is open for what we call um, midweek service, a.k.a. healing, miracle, and deliverance service. Solution on the Wednesday morning or evening is held every last Wednesday in the month. Every last Wednesday is soon solution on the Wednesday evening. This is time for the miraculous. This is time when miracles, signs, and wonders are wrought in this assembly. Bring the sick, the lame, the deaf, every last Wednesday, and God will do the miraculous. Every Friday is time for Holy Ghost night. We manufacture prayers in this assembly every Friday from 5.30 p.m. If you want to come before the actual time, this place is opened from 4.30 p.m. so you can pray for an hour before the time. Our monthly whole night of prayer is held every last Friday in the month. From 11 p.m. on to 5 a.m., we pray in this assembly for the nation, our homes, and all in sundry. Deliverance department is currently on a break. You will be duly informed when the deliverance um, team will come on. Communion and Evangelism Sunday is held every third Sunday. And uh, we are kindly requesting you all to invite all as we hold our usual communion and deliverance Sunday. Usually it's also deliverance Sunday because as we take communion, signs and wonders take place. All home cell leaders, former home cell leaders, if you know you were having a home cell and it's no longer functioning or your home cell is still functioning, kindly give your names to the apostle this morning or any time after this time, the Apostle Chris John gave your names and uh, you'll be mightily blessed. The Women's Fellowship will be having their general monthly meeting on the 16th March 2024 at 4 p.m. All women, including new members, are welcome. The stewards department will also be having their usual meeting this coming th on the 28th, 28th March 2024 at 5.30 p.m. And according to the notice at their usual place, all stewards are welcome. The men's fellowship of this assembly is organizing a power-packed men's conference um, on the 30th March 2024 at 8.30 p.m. A.M. 8.30 A.M. in this assembly, the men of Flaming Evangelical Ministries Headquarter Church will be coming up with a wonderful program. The theme is bringing out the man in you. Bringing out the man in you. All are welcome. Men, women, youth, adults are all welcome. I think it's a good place to put your hands together for the men. Because the theme itself is one that is captivating. Bringing out the man in you. Whether you are a man or a woman, this is uh, generic. Um, we are also having the walk to the beach. The men of this assembly will be having their walk to the beach on the 23rd of March. From 8 a.m. they will be assembled or will be assembled here and will walk to the Lomley Beach. Thank you for your kind attention. 
this is time for our building offering. It is also our mission offering. The ministry has got over 100 branches, country, I mean, countrywide or all over the world. And all of these branches are sponsored from this headquarter church. And the funds are not coming from abroad, but from above. Hallelujah. Everything is coming from above. And sponsorship is coming from this assembly onto Europe, America, and all other continents of the world. So this is a worthy place to give sacrificially towards the expansion of the kingdom countrywide and all over the world. Hallelujah. Shall we please stand? My God, you are so wonderful. My God, you are so wonderful. My God, you are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. We praise your name. See, my God. My God, you are so wonderful. Every day. My God, you are so wonderful. All the time. My God, you are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. We praise your name.
and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for having given unto the kingdom expansion. The offerings are blessed. And we pray, Holy Dear Father, that henceforth our giving will cease to be a ceremony, but it will be a testimony to your glory. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Put your hands together as the choir comes forth, as they come forward to give a contribution. Clap for them as they come, please. Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. For Jesus. For Jesus, the risen Lord. He's no longer in the grave. Hallelujah. The Bible in Psalm 149, verse 2, I believe, says, Let the high praise of God be in their mouths, and a double-edged sword in their hands. And this morning, with a high praise in our mouths, we will use our double-edged sword this morning to pull down strongholds, to cast down imaginations, and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God in our lives. We bless your name, Lord. angels all around my delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown you're my help and my defender you're my savior and my friend by your grace I live and breathe to worship you
here this morning. Are you ready to use your double-edged sword? Every high thing must be brought down. taking the wig off because it was coming up <laughs> but the hair is not <laughs> we give him all the glory 
The hold of fear is broken. The hold of depression is broken. He has overcome. We have the victory. Put your hands together and celebrate him. serve a living, risen Savior. That makes a difference with any other religion. Because Jesus is not found in the grave. He conquered death. He conquered hell. We bless God as we approach the, the Easter season. We celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I have a couple of announcements. Then we'll go into the message this morning. We want to welcome Minister Annette Thomas from our London branch. His son is here. Can you please stand up, Minister Annette Thomas, your, your son? All right, stand up. Okay, and all the entourage, the people who came along with, him, with her, please, can you please stand up? Well, church, um, very good. Auntie Annie has been with Fleming, I don't know how many decades. She was here with Fleming. She went back to London, and she, she's playing a very active role in Fleming Church. But one of our daughter, coats, adopted daughter, passed a few weeks ago. So she had to come to Sierra Leone to do the burial on, on Thursday. And the son too flew from America to be here to be here with us. And these are all the other relatives who are connected to this late Princess Dixie. We share your pain and we pray that God will take you back. Because you are going back this week, right? Going back to London. And you are going on Tuesday. Are you going via London or are you going direct to America? Or oh, via London. All right. Well, the Lord take you safely and bless you. I know it's not not to, not to the right thing for come at all for actually, but that is it. We pray God will console you and God will strengthen you. Okay? Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And also um, Reverend Susan C.C. is here with us. She is one of the pastors in the London branch. We have two branches in London. One in Southeast, one in North London. She served as the assistant pastor for quite some time before her retirement. But up to today, she's very, she's here actively involved. And she too will be going this week. Am I correct? You are going this week. Can you come and say hello to the church quickly? Come and say hello to the church. Church, clap for her. She has been... Very instrumental. Wait, wait, catch yourself. He sent, he sent for me offering. Thank you, sir. Good morning, church. May God bless us all. I just want to thank God for another opportunity to come to Freetown, Sierra Leone. We give God the glory. I spent time with my son, Bernard. You all know him. And he has looked after me well. Praise God and the rest of the other families. Well, we are doing well back home. Uh, well, 
this is home. How many homes have I got? <laughs> we are doing well in London. We have our apostle, Eugene Tenga. May God continue to bless him and continue to use him in the name of Jesus. We are very proud of him in the name of Jesus. And we always stand and watch his back in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We give God all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for the work you are doing. Thank you for supporting us in prayers. Over there, it's not so, what should I say? We can dance and show and do everything. We can go around the streets, but we have some limits back there. So we thank God that in spite of all that, we are making progress. And we thank God for our bishop, Bishop Abu Koruma, and Lady Patricia Koruma, Pastor Ola, and Reverend Juliet. We give God all the glory for your lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor Susan. Thank you very much. You are, well, you've spoken on behalf of the entourage from Sierra Leone. We have also our current um, assistant pastor is the person of is a Nigerian by birth and a British by national. What of Oga? Oga, please stand up for us. Can you please? I he came with his wife, Evet. Can you please stand up? Very good. These these people are also helping with the church. And if it gets a special ministry, if I go London, that two piasus, you know they miss me. You know they miss me. So I talk about so I will give you strength for buy more. You know, thank you, thank you very much. These people, so you see, we have London people are here. And see, any on ah, the people should be on steady with with the cow foods. Ah, that that can join bad. Thank you so much, and God richly bless you for coming. Um, uh, we saw the boss, right? They display the bus. We bought a 50 something seater bus. That one will be put on the road to help to transport people. We are also looking to buy another bus. This one will take about 50 something people. It's very ideal, very nice. So we are we are we are starting the process this week to register the bus. So the bus will go out and pick people free of charge. This will be for the western zone. We want to buy another one for eastern. And guess what happened? Somebody came to me this week and said, you know what? That will be a very, very good uh, project to get another bus for the eastern. It will alleviate the suffering. So the person came and gave $5,000. He said, please don't mention my name. He said, this will provoke others to come and give to us that project. So if you feel led, I know right now the Lord Spirit is talking to you. You can make your contribution. So you can be able to, I mean, buy another bus for the, east, for the eastern axis. The one that we got from Australia, that I bought from Australia many years ago, got some engine problem. So I've sent to Guinea. So you can buy the engine from Guinea. So that means with that, this boss, the one from Australia being restored, another boss. How many bosses do we have now? Three bosses. Is that not wonderful? That's wonderful. So please, um, Pastor Ola is there. Um, Reverend Benji is there. If you have any contribution towards getting that big boss, please feel free to do that. And God will richly bless you in abundance. Can I have the amen in the house? Then finally, finally, we have some, some visitors. Definitely, we cherish visitors. They are, they are from the U.S. Can you, I think the Minister Bondumanye, I think she is very good. Um, briefly, just I'll give five minutes. Can you please come forward? Let us see our visitors. Can you please move forward, please? 
let's, let's. Can I hear the mic? Very good. Come up, come up. No, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on, the mic. Come up, come up. Come on, is that the way you receive visitors? We are very happy this morning to receive you. Thank you, thank you. Please give them the mic quickly to just tell us their, their names and where they are from. Quickly, 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 quickly. Wow. Just tell us your name and where you're from. And about you will talk late. Uh -huh. okay. Martin Satanda, praise the Lord. From where? Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria. Oh, wow. You are another Oga man. Very good. Welcome. Okoro Uche from Nigeria. Wow. Angel Okoro from Nigeria. Ah, wow. Elisha Madaki from Nigeria. Wow, Nigeria. Samson Okiseni from Nigeria. Shadia Tanda from Nigeria. Joy Michael from Nigeria. Tammy Blankenship from Virginia. Toshe Payne from Illinois, U.S. <laughs> Rosemary Fisher from America. America. Mitchell Parsons, North Carolina. Sherry Postma, United States of America. Gerald Moses, Nigeria. Kim Hagerman, USA. Jen Moore, United States. Waliat Isan, Nigeria. Randy Seeger, USA. Barb Jansen, Michigan, USA. Wow, let's clap for them. Um, finally, uh, why is Auntie Bondu? Auntie Bondu from Frita International Airport. Okay, just, just, uh, I, just about three minutes, just tell us. Quickly. Huh? Oh, to Sherry. Okay, beautiful. Very good. Three, four minutes, yeah. Sherry, go. Praise the Lord. Bondu from Sierra Leone. <laughs> Play me. And I want to ask Sherry, the team leader, postman, to make a statement. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Bondu. Thank you, Bishop. It's so wonderful to be in your church today. Thank you for all that you did to help us facilitate this medical outreach. What a wonderful welcome today in this church. It's been absolutely incredible. The worship time, the prayer, absolutely amazing. I can, I'm speaking on behalf of the team. We, see, we feel so welcome here. I also feel like it's a celebration at the end of our time serving here. So thank you. I know that many of you prayed for us in this outreach that we had this week. It was absolutely incredible. My heart is so full today. We saw 1,781 people this week, this team. 478 people opened their hearts to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, I'm standing with this incredible team behind me, but this isn't all of the people that helped us this week. Some of them could not travel from Injala and also from the Kenema region, but we had a lot of people come together, sacrifice their time, and come and serve, and, and many just honestly served our American team. We felt so welcome here in Sierra Leone. Um, what else do I want to say to you guys today? But you know what? I know that you were praying for us, and we're so very grateful. But I ask you to continue to pray. We prayed over many people. We had two people that were deaf that received their hearing, but we also saw people that were demon-possessed. We saw people with, that were very, very sick. So we pray just, we use the medicine as an avenue. That's it. We use the mes medicine as an avenue to share the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ. So continue to pray. 
um, I would love to see all of you guys get involved in going out to the most unreached places of Sierra Leone to share the gospel. So I hope you're encouraged by the sacrifice of this team. I would also like to introduce my partner, Martin Satanda with Global Hope Network International. He played a very big role in this outreach. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, very short statement. Okay, thank you very much. It's an honor to... I hope you come back one day. I hope you come back. I hope this will just serve as a springboard, you know, for future visits back to Sierra Leone. So you are from what part of Nigeria? I'm from the south of Nigeria. Okay, I was in Calabar in September. A team of seven went to minister yeah. in Calabar. Yes, Nigeria has been my second home. Yeah. I go there very often to preach. Well, God bless you. Thank you for coming. And have a very great time. Amen. Talk, let's put our hands again for them. Wow, so you see, the people are so burdened. That's why I like holding crusades across the nation. My next crusade will be at Cologne Stadium. Is it Cologne? Cologne Field. Why is Cologne Field? Angola Town will be there, I think, in April. We just came from Liberia. I wish we had the, the video slot so that you would see. We are in Liberia last week. We had a one-week convention with, well, now it's no longer Pastor Pay because Bishop Johnson, Danielson Johnson was there from uh, Maryland and is now Bishop-elect Pay Bagno. <laughs> and he will soon be consecrated. He has a very big church. If you ask, Apostle, Apostle will tell you that the morning seminars alone we see about a thousand people. He has a mega church on the Sunday, this past Sunday, the just um, inaugurated um, uh, head of state, Ambassador Boakai, was at the meeting on Sunday where I ministered. I preached here on Sunday. The man, the man is an usher in his church. Now, usher, oh, usher. And when I was preaching, he was taking down notes. He's a Baptist. So I ministered. I preached about a new season for, Niger for Liberia. He came out. I prayed with him in his statement. He said, the bishop has said it all. It's a new season for Liberia. <laughs> so we are planning a massive crusade in Ganta, up country in, Li in, in Liberia. Sometime, maybe during the course of this year. Well, we want to thank God that the trip was very successful. I preached five, five times. I was so exhausted. Very, very exhausted. Apostle Christo and others were handling the, the seminars in the morning. I was handling the revival meeting. So to this end, I said to myself, I think I need to continue to rest. So I called our see your pastor or is the regional superintendent and ask him, I say, you know what? I'm supposed to preach today on marriage and home. I said, but I think I need to take some time more to rest. Hello? So I've asked him to step in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome Reverend Olaminde Juliet Macaulay as he brings the word of God to us today. Amen. Amen. Kindly sit. Well, uh, I believe this is a very good example of family. And in a family, fathers 
there should come a time fathers should rest. And uh, if you have your father, your natural father, please, 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 you are grown up now. You are grown up now. So please try to make even mommy rest. Take up some responsibility and let the family, you know, rule. So the, you, you, your mom does not have to tell you eight weeks before for you to go to the kitchen. You should see the need if they are tired and do it. And so today I'm honored to stand there because I want to be a good, a very good member of this family. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you, we bless you for this time. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you because we will talk about the family, the home, and ourselves as members of this family. I pray that you give us the wisdom and the idea, and we will see clearly what you want us to see today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Well, last week we talked, and I will continue uh, to use the same scripture from last week. We, Isaiah chapter 5, and this Sunday will move a little downwards, and we'll go to verse 5 and verse 6. Now, let me tell you, what I'm doing to my vineyard. I'm removing its edges so it will be destroyed. I'm breaking down its walls so it will be trampled. I'll turn it into a ruin. It won't be pruned or hood, and thorns and thistles will grow up. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. This is a decision that this man took concerning his vineyard. He expected his vineyard to produce good grapes, but unfortunately, that vineyard produced grapes that he did not want. And so he made a decision. He made a decision. Friends in life, in family, in the home, and in our personal lives, we would always, everybody, I said it last week, last Sunday, everybody will want to produce good grapes. But there will come times in our lives when the grapes will not be good. Beetles maybe will eat it. Maybe because of the temperature, the grapes will not ripe as we want it. But the decisions you, would, you will make, the choices you will make, will be what will take you forward. And today, a lot, a lot, a lot of homes, a lot of families have taken decisions that today are affecting the family, the home, and their personal life. And so today, I want to talk about the choices we make, not only for our homes, not only for our marriage, not only for the family, but even for ourselves. I want you to understand that life will never, ever, ever, ever give you always perfect grapes. And one thing we should know and understand is nobody is born Curse. Nobody. It's the choices we make that will either make us a blessing or a curse. But nobody is born a curse. In fact, when God made Adam in Genesis chapter 5, when he made Adam at, at chapter 5, he gave us the ge genealogy of Adam. And let's read what it says and prove that from the very beginning, we were blessed. We were always blessed. So Genesis chapter 5, and we'll read verses 1 and 2. If it's on the screen, let's read it 
together. Genesis 5, 1 and 2. Okay, I'll read. This is the record of Adam's descendant. On the day God created humanity, he made them to resemble God. So you are God's res resemblance. And God is not a cause God. If you resemble God, you have the, 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 the inner ability of God. And you will testify and you will attest with me that God is not a cause God. So if you resemble God and you believe you are cause, it's not correct. It's not correct. And we were created to resemble God. And verse 2 said, and created them male and female. He blessed them and called them humanity on the day they were created. He blessed us and called us humanity on the day we were created. So you were not born cursed. It, it may be, it will be a decision or a choice our parents, our grandparents, our forefathers, or aunts or somebody made that is affecting you. And so I'm here today to submit to you that you can change it. You can change it. And you have the ability to change it. Start by believing that you are no curse. Everybody will have problems. Everybody. Even God who made us had problems. God looked down one day and said, I, I regret it. I made man. So he too had problem. He had problem with sin. That, in fact, he knew that he would have problem. So before the foundation of the world, he prepared Jesus Christ to come so that he would die and save us from sin. So humanity, listening to me today, you'll have problems. When you will say to yourself, where did, why, why should I have problem? Where did I pick up this problem? As long as we are born in a family, one day or one time in your life, somebody took the wrong decision or somebody took the right decision. But maybe in your own life, in your own self, for your own self, you also took the wrong decision and you are bearing the consequences of those decisions. So today, let me encourage you and say to you that we can turn it. We can turn it. We all, we all will experience it. We all. As long as we are in this world, the devil will fight us for the blessings. As long as we are in this world, the, the humanity will compete with us. Sisters will compete with brothers for mommy's love. Aunties will compete with uncles so that their children will be greater than his or our brother's children. So uh, even among us, we compete against each other. In the home we compete, we want the best homes. We want the best things for our children and our family. And this all may, takes choice. So humanity will compete with us. And some of us, because of the competition, our homes, our marriages, our, our family, and even as we ourselves as persons are not doing well. We are producing sour grapes now. We are producing. But you see, today, let me emphasize something. We always always, always look at the devil and we look at human beings. Oh, I'm suffering in my home. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I, I should have this. Oh, I should have that because of my witch aunt, because of my witch mother-in-law, because of my, my uh, sorcerer uncle and aunties. But friends, today, with all seriousness, there's one thing you, we, you forget. And this one thing I want you to know today that you can hurt God and he can curse you. David was in a point in his life, did something that he should not do. He numbered the people and they sent the, the prophet to him and God gave him a choice. He said, now choose. Let me send pestilence. 
let me leave you in the hands of mortal humanity or let me punish you. And David said, God, if you leave me in the hands of people, they'll finish me. If you send pestilence, maybe I will suffer. But if I fall into your hand, it is better. So let me choose you. You deal with me. Because David understands that everything ends with God. Everything ends with God. So if God had called you, God have given you a family, God have given you a, a home, or God have, have placed you in a position, God knows and God wants you to use what he had given you correctly so that you will be okay. Today, a lot of us, a lot of us, we go deliver us, we bind, we this, we that, we do things. It is because the hand of God is against us. It is just because the hand of God is against us. And God is against us because of the choices we are making. Because of the choices we are making. So in, we come back to Genesis. And in Genesis chapter 4, today we will look at the first family. We look at, it is not the Obamas and, and, and the Bidens who are first family. The, 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 the Adam, Adam and his family were the first families. Not the queen and prince, the prince Charles. So let us look at the first family in Genesis chapter 4, verses 8 and 11. Let, let's read it in the King James. I'll, I'll read it from the screen. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. We established last week that problems situation will come between us as siblings. And I advise that you don't. When I went home, the siblings had started talking without even mommy and daddy's intervention. You will not always be there. So leave them. Let them quarrel. Cain and Abel, watch them so that they will not kill themselves. But let them solve it for themselves. Sometimes we make bad choices. Now we will want to blame the one who killed the other. But, but maybe it is because of what he had mommy says. That's why the death came about. So he made a choice. So, uh, so uh, that is what they are planning. So let me kill him. Well, I alone will, will, will I, I'll be alone. And then I'll inherit everything. So you take time. So Cain, they were there together. They, they, they were talking. But an argument came and Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. The next verse. Are you running with me? And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Uh, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? You are everybody's keeper. As long as God has placed you in that family, you are their keeper. You like Antio, you don't like Antio, you like your in laws you don't like them. Then why did you allow your daughter to marry them? They are now your in-laws, so you have to like them. You are responsible for them. You have a part to play. If you are not, not responsible, your daughter or your son will suffer. Period. They will suffer. Definitely, they will suffer. My, my, my children will say, ah, you, you know, I told you, they had problems. And they, I, they will say, don't call that because dad will take the, his in-laws. Yes, because I, you have to live with, with him or her. So if, if I did that, antagonize them, they will surely kill you. So instead of that, I'll, I'll pamper them and give, and give the daughter or son wrong so that they will take care. So they, they will always block. You see, that's why your daddy said, so uh, look pancake. And they are feeding my son and my daughter <laughs> and keeping them happy like I want them. So the, the Bible said, Cain and, uh, and the Lord said unto Cain, we are responsible. God will always ask you for the responsibility of another family member. 
whether uh, in-laws or not. And the brother said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? You are your brother's keeper. You are your brother's keeper. And the next verse, verse says, and the Lord said unto Cain, and he said, what hast thou done? Know this, that God knows everything you do. God knows everything you do. So don't forget, he knows everything you do. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. This is what we forget. This is what we forget. We, when we hurt people, we say, ah, after all, I, I'm, I'm older than him. After all, I'm bigger than him. After all, I have more money than him. After all, I'm, I'm more influential than him. But the blood of your brother, you have hurt somebody, and it is crying. And it is crying. You know, so I, I, I was talking with somebody, and the, the same way we are generationally blessed is the same way we are generationally cursed. And maybe the uh, one day, one time, because of, yes, we feel we have all the, the, the money we can. So we just take the land, fence it, and, uh, and tell them to just go away because there are people who broke stone. They were there. And every day they look at you and say, Papa God, they took my land because they are in government. They took my land because they are director. Punish them. He will punish you. They, they, they spoiled my daughter. They did this. They did that. So take care of what you do. Take care of what you do. So the blood cried. And God has to listen. Don't, don't, don't say it is just foolish talk. Don't. Don't say it is foolish talk. But God will always listen. And the blood cried from the ground. And the next verse says, let's go, okay, and the next, okay, let's leave the next verse. So you, so you see, God will always, at all times, listen to their cry. But whatsoever happens, if, 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 if the devil, if the devil put a curse upon you, these people told us that Two people got their hair in back. It can be reversed. Because choir had sang that he, 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 he overcame and he broke everything. But if God pulls his hand upon you and say you are not going up, who will lift that hand? Not even your prayer. The only thing that can lift it is to return back again to what he wants. When, 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 when God, well, God is like my dad, when I was in school, and then I failed, and then my dad said, and then my mom said, oh, he, do, he, 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 he has failed, he has failed, so let us move him to school. My dad said, who? Him? He's going back to school, and he's going back and he, he should make sure he comes either first, second, or third. And my mom said, no, it's very difficult. He knows this. Then my dad said, go, bring your books, your bag, and everything. And he told my mom, say, check. My literature was there. Everything was there. He said, this man is going back to school. What would you call him? And my mom like a very good and Walsh girl, said a repeater. Say so, he's going back to repeat. Everything he learned last year, he will repeat this coming year. So he's, he's supposed, in fact, I pulled third, he's supposed to either come first or second. If not, you and your son, you will not sleep here. And I, and I had to, I had to return to his ways of studying, return to his ways of cramming. And when I kept him happy, he was happy. That is God also. That is God also. So let us know that God wants us. And he, he, he is not, you know, if anything happens and you grieve God, 
Come back to God. Come back to God. Because he alone can solve it. In verse 13 of chapter 4. In verse 13 of chapter 4. See what happened. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. God is merciful. He is merciful. Continue. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be, shall be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that finds me shall slay me. That was his concern. That was his concern. He did not want to die. But God found a, full, a solution to that. He found a solution. The next verse says, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Let least any finding him should kill him. Friends, you think you are doing well. You are like Cain. You, it is only the mark of God upon your life. But that is why you think you are doing well. That is why you think you, you can just you rule the home like, like, like Caesar. You come when you like, you go when you like, you do what you like. And you go out and you still make small money. Please, let me advise you. As long as you are not doing it, God will sweep. For maybe he is allowing you to have position because you have 14, 14 children with somebody else's child. It is for the 14 children and the dependents that you will take, that you are taking care of. That is why you think you are prospering. It is just for them. Because you know why? They are praying, God give on cool money, God give on cool money, even though he waste it, and God hears them. He hears them. So don't think it is by your strength. It is for a purpose. So the Bible says he solved it. There's nothing God cannot solve in a family, in a home, and in your personal life. There's nothing he cannot solve. All you have to do is to go back to the principles that God had set for your home, your family, and your personal life. Go back to it. Nobody takes a car to the seamstress. Another, nobody takes a, a, a material to the mechanic. No, you take them where they belong. So God is looking forward for you to come back. In fact, God loves family. He, every family of this world is named after him. So he loves family. He, he gives him when families fall apart, when, when homes fall apart. He loves family, he loves homes, and he loves you. So God wants you to know and understand that God will solve the problem. He will not only solve the problem, but he will comfort you. God will comfort you. So to those of us who are going through things, let me say to you that it will comfort you. It will solve it and it will comfort you. It will definitely comfort you because in verse, in, in, in verse 25 to 26 of chapter 4, we, we saw that. We saw that, that he, he indeed comforted them. Verse Genesis 4, 25 and 26. Adam knew his wife intimately again and gave birth to a son. She named him Seth. Why? Because God has given me another child in place of Abel whom Cain killed. So whatsoever you are going through now, God will give you another child. God will give you another child. 
God will always, will all time comfort you. He will not leave you comfortless. Yes, they, that one had gone. But God knew that they need to be comforted. So God gave them another child. He gave them another child so that they would be comforted. So that that child would take a place of the one they lost. So today, if you are here, don't worry. God will comfort you. It may be difficult now because you don't like it. I mean, society will say, well, look at his or her children. It's the circumstance now, but God will not forget you. God will continue to train. That is how God trains us. That is how God, God toughens us. God will comfort you. I said, God will comfort you. Yeah, you are, you are, you are thinking. He's saying, God will comfort me. God will comfort me. And five days now, the man knock her home. Clap for yourself. It will comfort you. It will definitely comfort you. Oh, he's saying, it will comfort me. But God, God, even before your kid takes drugs, God knows they will take drugs. Nothing take God by surprise. He knows everything. But if he allows it, then, then he has a purpose. But until you find the purpose, it will comfort you. It will comfort you. You know, so, so, you know, so somebody said, I said, well, well, why, why, why do you just, just, just leave the house and go? Before the man could answer, Mrs. has jumped in. And the, she was just ranting and talking. And then he, he, the man said to me, that is why I always leave home. So I told the, the wife when we were sitting in the office, say, go correct yourself. Go and humble yourself. Go humble yourself. It is not because this person has this, this person has this. Now, live according to what your husband have. And please, kindly, close your lips. Or else, they, they, he will find comfort somewhere else. So, God will comfort you. And if he allows you now to go through anything, know that God Almighty will bring it to pass. You see, as, as family, as people who are brothers and sisters, when we have bad things, we shout, ah, in Jesus' name, I bind it. Lord, have mercy. When bad things are, we just use the name. We should go beyond using the name now. As God is comforting us, let us go beyond using his name. And today, Christianity, it does not work. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in Christ, and I'm in Christ. I call the name of God, and it did not work. It, will, it, it, is, not, it is not enough. It is not enough. The name of God is powerful, but it is not enough. We have to do more. We have to do more. So if God is comforting you, please, 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 go back and receive the comfort. Sometimes he, the comfort he gives us is very, very difficult. It's very hard to bear. But he is God. And he who had made it hard will give you the faith and the courage to do what he wants. Are you, are you running with me? So please, let me say this to you. Well, I, 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 you know, well, but in Jesus' name, I, I, in Jesus this, in that and that, and quoting 38 scripture is not enough. And you are not seeing the change. You know why? It is because you are just using the name. But what is your work with God? Check your work with God. Eh? Check your work with God. In Genesis chapter 5. 
verse 22. Scream, am, am, am I jumping? I want, I want to just finish. Genesis 5, in verse 22, it says something I want to bring out to you today. I, I, okay. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. 300 years and begat sons and daughters. So he walked with God even though he had other things to do. Don't, don't, don't make the excuse. That is why the home is suffering. Don't make the excuse. I have too much things to do. I have too much things to do. Uh, uh, Julie, come, come. We are closing. Come. You are, you are, you are God. You are God. Just stand, stand there. You are God. If I am here, if I am here, and you, what's your name? Albert, come and attack me. And Albert attack me. And then I'm shouting, Jehovah, who can defend? Jehovah, by the time God lives there and come, Albert would have, would have finished me. But if Albert knows I walk with God every day, even though Albert has God and I walk with God, God walks with me and I walk with God and God walks with me. And I said to God, Jehovah Nisi, strike him. Jehovah, this strike. God is near me. He's always by me. And some of us in the home who have left God far away, so far, and now people are intruding and you, you want to shout the name of Jesus. You have left him. In fact, some of us have left him so far like the distance between Michigan and Freetown. Okay, you two go and take your seat. So walk with God. Walk with God. For, for 30 something years, he walked with God. It's not impossible. You can walk with God. In the home, walk with God. Don't walk by your senses. Don't walk by, by you know, the, the trend of the day. Let them say you are, you are, you are not social. Somebody said to me, I, I, I was joking with him, and I said to him, um, but people in the church, and I even hear from your office that people say you, you, you are antisocial. He said, me, Pastor, no, I'm not antisocial. I said, but you, uh, you, you, are, you don't mix. He said, because uh, I don't mix, because I am tired of people, so I keep to myself. What you don't say, they will say. What you say, they will add to and say it. He said, so I keep to myself. He said, and he, he said, when you mix with people, they force you to, to eat what you don't want. They, they force you to do what you don't want. So I keep to myself. So I can do what I want, eat what I want, and listen to myself. When God have you alone, he will fix the house. When God have you, it is not your mother-in-law problem. It is not your, 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 your son's problem to, to advise. You have the problem. God is your strength and your pillar. Then step away and listen for him. Just step away and listen for his direction. If, 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 if six people are telling you to, to come, come, um, back up your car. I, I told them, I, they, they, they said to me, it seems as if he's a proud man. No, I'm not a proud man, but three people cannot tell me inside one motor car to come. This is saying, come, keep so, keep this way. Ah, when I hit the car, they will tell me you should, have, you should have taken the decision for yourself. So I never, nobody, not even, even, one day Julius was telling me, come, come, go this way. Because I have that belief that I should solve it, I went into the gutter. Say, you don't go inside the gutter. I said, no. I have got, I, I can feel it. I've ate the gutter. He said, but I told you to go this way. 
And then I said to her, if I had gone this way, then the front star would have gone in the gutter. So, it's, uh, so we are equal. I said, oh, oh. But we solved it. So I said, you go home. I'll, I'll, I'll get the car off the gutter. So listen for God. God will never make a mistake. So listen for him. You have listened to other people for too long. Now start to listen to God. Now start to focus on God. So the Bible said eh, 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 we have to walk with God. If we don't see progress, continue to walk with God. Continue. Don't give up. Don't give up. You know, uh, I said something Sunday and then uh, one of my members came and she, she came to comfort me. But I, I've passed that. Don't make that mistake. Don't stop. Don't stop. We stopped and so we lost a child. We should have continued and continued and continued. God is not a quick fix God. God is a God of miracle and not a God of quick fix. A miracle, God will use the supernatural to change the natural. So God is a God of miracle and he knows the time, he knows the day, he knows the hour, he will do the miracle for you. So you just continue to go. Treat God like, like that's your rich uncle who has promised you school fee from when you were in class five and now you are in college and he still continues to, to give you school, to promise you school fee. And even though you are in college, you are still looking up to him. He has not even fulfilled your primary school and now you are looking up to him for, for college. I, one day uncle will pay the college. Now you are finishing college. So like, like your uncle, hold on to God like that. When they say, ah, look at how the marriage is going, look at how the home is going, look at how your life is going, since you have to be serving God, tell them I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still holding on. I'm still focused on God. Because one day, it will be, God knows everything. He, he doesn't have a watch, but he knows the time. He doesn't have a calendar, but he knows when things should stop and to start. So hold on to God. And then the Bible says in verse 29, verse, chapter 5, verse 29, it says, And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort, comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hand because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. So God will comfort you. It, it, will, it will bring it to pass. It will take a little time. When you go home and read, because of time, you know, did you, they, they'll tell you, set beget this, this beget that. So it took so long for, for a, it took a generation before Noah came. And Noah was the one who comforted them, who, bring an, who brought an end to the cause. Because he took humanity in a boat and God for after cursing, now placed a rainbow on the sky and said, as long as this rainbow is there, I will never, never curse the earth again. That's a very good example. As parents, we should emulate. As, as, as children, don't, don't go about every day. Let, yes, we will be hot. It, 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 it pains God that others drown. And he had to make that promise. But make the, the sacrifice. Make the sacrifice that you will keep harmony. You will keep the harmony. Even though it costs you, you will keep the harmony. Bishop always say every family has one boy or girl who, who, who always cause confusion, even to their old age. And I have one, my small, my, my small brother. A, a, a fact a, 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 is there now and he sent me a lovely text a very lovely text because he, he took all the rent, went away with it now I'm going to pay two point something million to fix the, the toilets 
in the compound, but he took the rent. <laughs> but to keep our money, I know I will catch him. I know. I know I will catch him. I want him to have confidence in me. Then I will catch him. I know when I will catch him. But to, to keep flowing, we have never flown uh, as, as brothers as we are flowing now. So I want to keep uh, that relationship going. So make the sacrifice. Make the sacrifice as we close today. We read our last scripture from Genesis chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. Genesis chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. And before we, we, we read, let me say to you, God will always send comforters, helpers to us. You see, we look for, the, for helpers the, in, you know, in the wrong places. This young man had a problem, and every year, the angel will come, stir the water. And when asked, he said, I have no man. Because he is looking for the wrong man. You see, naturally, we will, we will think, oh, our boss should help us. Your boss is not an helper, unless God make your boss an helper. Your boss is there to reward you for what you have worked for. Period. And so don't go and blame your boss. He should have taken the office money and given me. Now I am catching. Ah, he's paying you salary. So you should have taken your salary, saved it, not buying things you should not buy or enjoying yourself where you should not enjoy yourself. It's not his responsibility. Your family and and. And friends, you say, well, they did not, they, they are not there to help you. They are there to form a relationship for you. Through their friends, through everything, you 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 get a relationship. So don't bank on them. My mother did not help me. My my dad did not help me. If you say that today, then I'll clap for you. Because my, the only thing my dad do was to put me in a very good school. And when he had the opportunity for his children to go, he looked at me and my brother and said, you are men. You will be here. You, you, I, I was born here. I was raised here and I made it here. So you are men. You will be here. You will, you, you will pave your own way. But I will take my two girls and they are in America. The American citizens. But we, he left us here. I, will, I should have said to myself, may daddy not help me. So I'm a vagabond. No. In fact, the only thing he did was to tell us, I'm going to walk up the province so you and your wife, you can live in the house. And he forgot about us. And when he wants to rub salt in our wound, when we, we, we had the first child, he came, he came with his wife, my mother. They came down from up the provinces, from Sirunku. They came down. And the child, my, my first child with Juliet was just only uh, five months. They took the, the boy, went away. And the boy was there, going to school up line. And, and running around. He came to town. He never knew us. And he was speaking Mindy. <laughs> they kept him there. And they, he grew. But what I am saying to you today, they, my dad it was personnel manager there. But I never looked up to him as helper. My, my boss is there. I, I always look at him as, as a boss. The day I start to look at him as he should, he should be, that is why you don't enjoy the church. Because you think the money you give, he should take it and help you. No, you, God will find helpers for you. He's there to reward you. He will reward you with his prayer. He will reward you when he wants to reward you. That is why we, when the water is moved, we, 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 we fail. 
But how would you know your helper as I close? You will know them. You will understand them. And you will see them from verse 6. Then we close. Chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So your helper is somebody. Noah was the one who helped the family. Am I correct? So these are the characteristics you look for. Anybody who, who when you fail, will give you money again, will help you again, will be with you again, will always, by grace, you will always find grace in his or her eyes is your helper. It's not somebody who will grumble. I give you six million. You, you wasted it, this and that. In fact, give me all my money. Or somebody who will, who will buy bed for you and will go and, 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 and talk it. It's somebody who whatsoever you do, will find, you will always find grace in his or her eye. That person is your helper. If God could make your boss, I'm not, I'm not saying a, a cannot. God could make your boss. God could make a family member. All right? But if you find grace in his eyes, then that person is your helper. Number two, as, you, as let, let's finish it. Number two. The, no, um, uh, the next verse, verse, verse 8, verse 9. Okay, yeah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. Anybody who helps you so that you will help him or her is not your helper. No way. They are not your helper. If I help you, if I can't even tell me, can't help me. Huh? Why? Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. So uh, your helper should be a person who does not put demand on you. You know, we, we do help. And unfortunately for me, personally, when we, God will just bring women and women and women. There comes a time when we had to sponsor one young woman. And I told Juliet, I said, these two, you will handle them. And I was glad. You know, because the, the, the perception was if you help me, myself, I will help you. I too should help you. And I said to one of them, you want to help me? If I you, you, bread I, we buy, Juliet and I give you, you buy clothing and everything for you. How can you help me? And she said to me, look inside in or look inside in. So I said, I'm not helping you for I'm helping you because you are to me like a daughter. That's, that, that is why. Because for whatsoever a man sweat, and I love my daughters, I don't want them to reap what I show. So I took care that she looked after them. And she's looking after them. One of them uh, came and finally said goodbye to us because I think he has a relationship now that she will get married very, very soon. But let me encourage you today. I want to really encourage you today. Walk with God. He wants to fix it. If we continue to disobey, if we, sometimes it is very hard. But walk with God. And God will fix that thing you are looking forward for, for. God will bring it. God will bring the comfort you want. This world will never give you comfort. Marriages are, are just going haywire all over the world all over the world. Marriages are going all over. As I close, I leave you with a story I read. I think it's uh, either CNN or CNN. They are flip uh, the, This guy, like we always marry, and he said to the bride, your parents, I will handle all the other things, but you make the food. You do the food. And the parents were happy they did the food. 
and the day for the marriage, they were there, and the, the food were there. You know how they marry in America? They have these big tents, and they go in there, the pastor and everybody, and, uh, you know, and whilst they were there, and the guy said, before I take the vow, let me tell everybody that I have an envelope for you all. And he clapped. And the best man took the best man, took the envelope, shared it out. And he said, well, before the priest continues, please let everybody open their envelope. And then we'll take the vows. And then they opened the envelope and they reached out. Each envelope has a picture, has a photo. And in that photo was this best man having an affair with the Yahoo, with the bride. And when everybody saw it, the guy said, priest, I'm leaving. Their parents, our parents provided the food. Who wants to eat? Eat. But I cannot marry this person who was cheating with my best friend. So you take care what you do. And unfortunately for the best friend, he was married and have children. And from the news, they walked out. They too walked out. So please, as I take my seat, know what you do. Now he has set, uh, uh, he, has, he has left a trail that will take years to mend. Let me say to you, God bless you. Oh, wow, 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 what a word, what a word, what a word, what a word, whatsoever a man so it, that shall he, good, if you have your sight, bring your sight, place your sight on the altar, the Lord bless you, the Lord increase you,